Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're dropping by for the first time. And today we're going to, yet again, do two things, because we just recently done two things. That's right, it's kind of a two-for-one review, if you will, when we look at this guy. It is the Transformers Siege 35th Anniversary Sound Blaster, or is it, in the latest Got by True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, that's right, man, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up on the channel, at least for now. Hopefully, that will continue in perpetuity when people get sensible and get their head on straight and everything works out going forward. Let's hope. This is Sound Blaster, but before we get to him, I'm also going to ask you to please check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L, The Autobot Family, and have a look for me everywhere across social media. All of those links are down in the description, and I am calling this guy Logos Prime. So what are the two things that we need to do? Well, one, we're actually going to review this figure as Sound Blaster, because it's Sound Blaster. But I'm also going to give you uh, kind of a little bit of, of history as to why I'm going to have this guy be Logos Prime and who the heck Logos Prime even is. I'll also talk about what I did here uh, with a, just a touch of some custom work. Truth is, I did more custom work on this guy, Hell Buzzsaw. And we're going to talk about both of these lads when we head over to the table and take a closer look at them. And indeed, any self-respecting Transformers fan will realize that if we go back to the history of the franchise, especially as it unfolded in Japan, that we had an episode where Soundwave and Blaster were locked in combat and fought to the point of destroying each other. Well, when they got destroyed, we all know that Blaster was kind of rebuilt and recolored to become twin cast, and we know that Soundwave here had all of his little minions take his parts and rebuild him into the ever dangerous Sound Blaster. But that's not exactly how our story is going to unfold for this review, no, but we're gonna start off the way we always do and take a quick look at the packaging first. And this may very well be the one member of the Transformers 35th anniversary wave that I wanted. Nothing against the cell shaded Megatron or Optimus. I've seen both of them. They look great if you're into the cell shading. The blue streak, kind of the same thing. If you're into that mold, you know, you have Prowl, you have Barricade, you have a Smoke Screen. You're in for that mold, then you should have Blue Streak. And honestly, he is painted beautifully. He wears it so incredibly well. But I wanted this guy, not for Sound Blaster though. Now, nevertheless, we do have nice um, kind of <laughs> like packaging here. Over on this side, we just have a big 35. We don't have artwork necessarily there. We do have nice artwork over here of Sound Blaster. It looks amazing. And on the back, of course, we do have his alt mode. We do have uh, his like robot mode. I assume that he can do the uh, like lamp post mode. Why wouldn't he? He's just a molar reuse. I assume that if you wanted to get the Shockwave Labs uh, kind of forearms and slider pieces like I did for Soundwave, he could do a boombox mode. You could even come up with a couple of boombox modes. If you want to see the two available boombox modes, and if you want to see the uh, lamp post mode, check out my look at Soundwave. And if you want to see the uh, effect of the Shockwave Labs upgrade kit on Soundwave or Sound Blaster, if you will, then you can also check that out. And here we have those wonderful Siege instructions colored very nicely with large pictures. And yes, even though this is a 35th anniversary figure, and that's kind of its own thing. It is, of course, branded as Siege. On the flip side, we have my 
absolute favorite panel. You guys know what it is by now, I'm sure. It's the accessory stats. Again, right now, these are written in Cybertronian. Very peculiar how some of these are English and some of these are Cybertronian. Um, but you can tell overall that generally they're quite powerful, especially his handheld cannon and um, his like shoulder cannon piece. And when I say handheld cannon, I mean this one over here and his shoulder cannon. This other one isn't quite as strong. That's that weird piece that like nobody really knows why it's there. Uh, but like, okay, it, good stats, he's strong, he's formidable. I think we already knew that. And indeed, now that we're through all of that kind of uh, preliminary nonsense, we can get into the real meat of this review, which is going to, of course, be the character himself. Now, as you well know by now, my intention is not to use this guy, Sound Blaster. He will be Logos Prime. And some people are initially going to say, who and what is Logos Prime? Logos Prime is recognized by Vector Prime as being uh, more adept at controlling time and space and those factors than even he is. He is, in some universes, a member of the original 13 and at times, at times, he has kind of um, become so lost to time and history that he's sort of become more the stuff of legend. But, but there is an official toy representation of him because there is a fiction associated with him. And that toy representation goes back to the Universe Sound Blaster. And uh, he, of course, comes with Hell Buzzsaw, who is the bird character, basically his minion character, but really that's who Logos Prime speaks through. And his intention was to kind of find a successor for his power, and it was going to be Megatron. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that lore in a second, but for now I think it's safe to say that the ship mode sort of matches that because Logos Prime certainly wouldn't have been on Earth. So I'm cool with having the ship mode be him and believing that he was never a lamppost and believing that he was never a uh, boombox. So like I said, I'm not really going to show the transformations, though I will show one. I'll show the transformation from this to robot mode. If you want to see any of the other kind of fan modes and stuff, like I said, check out those other reviews because this transformation is quick and easy. And since I already showed uh, with Soundwave everything going from robot to this, it only seemed fair to do it in reverse. I should correct myself slightly. I think I said that it was Universe Sound Blaster um, that is the like considered a representation of Logos Prime. It's Galaxy Force Sound Blaster. I don't really even know if there's a difference if I'm being perfectly honest with you. And also, while I said that certain universe, that in certain universes he's regarded as a member of the 13, that's certainly not always true. That being said, because I'm trying to sort of amass a version of the 13, like, I'm kind of okay with sort of throwing him in there. Kind of. For now. Again, we'll talk about that lore slightly in a little bit. Okay, so I think that this looks way better than the Soundwave version. If I'm being honest, I love the red. I love the uh, way it plays off of the black. I think it looks way better with this mold reuse. The one piece that's remolded is that we have like a double deep tape deck. A lot of people complain about it, but that's accurate. If you know how Soundwave was rebuilt into Sound Blaster and you know that Japanese uh, Headmaster uh, series, then you know that this is accurate. I did remove the battle damage because it was driving me nuts. Plus, as Logos Prime, I don't want him to be branded as a Decepticon. He's not. And so, of course, me being me, got halfway through the transformation and realized that my battery was after dying on me. So we're going we're gonna to start it again here. We're going to pick it up. It's pretty easy. We're going to start off and we're going to remove the two blasters from these pylons, and we're going to fold these pylons in and out of the way. The third blaster is over here on the far side in his hand because I, I didn't really know what else to do with it. We're going to take that out of the way. Then we can split the hands and bring them out. This can fold back, and this can fold out. His hand can fold out. And on the other side, we can also fold that blaster piece back. Then we pick up these two leg panels, and they're significantly tighter on this guy than they were on Soundwave, at least on my copy, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But we fold those down, and then we split these legs. Now, 
I guess actually before I fold these down, I should open the back of the leg. I should flip out a foot, close this piece in, close up the back of the leg, push that down. Same over here, open out the back of the leg, flip out a foot, close in that piece, close up the back of the leg, bring this down. And we can turn the legs forward. Now we're gonna stand this guy up because things are kind of to a point now where we only have to deal with the upper body and it's easier to do it if he's standing up. And yeah, now we can kind of turn this guy around and sort of hold that off and sort of flip then the entire body out. We can come in here and flip out the head piece and then sort of angle the body back. Bring that up. Angle the body back and lock it down to position. Bring this panel down on his back and collapse it into position and then flip up the arm and lock it in and rotate it down and turn it. Flip up the arm, lock it into position, bring it down, rotate the arm and turn it. And then we can take this blaster and put it in there. Actually, I like to do it so it's facing this way. And then on the other side, I like to do the same thing. And then finally, I like to take that weird blaster that nobody knows what to do with and make that his shoulder cannon. Because like I said, for me, this is Logos Prime. But Logos Prime, by the way, boom, here he is in robot mode. Logos Prime can't be Logos Prime without Hell Buzzsaw. So what did I do for Hell Buzzsaw before we get into this guy? Enter a custom painted siege laser beak. Uh, a lot of gold paint and some black paint added to this guy. Um, same articulation as laser beak I'll always had. I mean, it's a bird, it doesn't do a whole lot. In terms of his conversion, again, we can flip this piece back and the whole head can come up and we close these in and we put those feet out and indeed he can get into cassette mode. Uh, you know, easy, decent transformation. I, 10, I guess. Articulation, 10, I guess. Um, coloration, well, it matches Hell Laser Beak or Hell Buzzsaw now. So, 10, I guess. I don't know. He's a great little laser beak. Like, I, I dig this laser beak. Some people have complained and said, hey, he has that visor Cybertronian look, but like, I dig it. I think it's a great little figure myself. Now, I adore the black, gray, red, and even this like orangey gold color around his tape. I think it's glorious, and I love the translucent red. Now, we could fit two tapes in there. Hell, Buzzsaw can fit in there. Of course, he can also lock onto the arm. I never find that locking him onto the arm works well. A lot of times, I just kind of set him up on the shoulder for display purposes. In terms of coloration, 10. I love it. In terms of uh, transformation, honestly, I think it's a pretty good transformation. I'm, he can, he's so versatile. I mean, if you want him as Sound Blaster and you want him to do the tape deck mode and you want him to do the light post mode, he can pull it off, man. He can absolutely pull it off. 10, in terms of articulation, I'm gonna say head goes left, right, up and down. We have arms. Those arms can go all the way around. They can go out. They can bend uh, like all the way up. We uh, have a bicep rotation or swivel, I should say, I suppose. The hands can go in and out, but they don't really have like a, a, a swivel. We have a waist. We have a leg that can go way back. It can go way for, forward because this hip skirt, hip skirt can get out of the way. It can go way out to the side. We have a bice or a thigh swivel. We have 90 degrees at the knee. We have um, an ankle that can go forward and back and a little bit of an ankle tilt, enough to get you what you need, man, enough to get you what you need. He has the red visor. A lot of people are changing, changing that out with the yellow visor of Soundwave. I painted Soundwave's red and I'm cool with that. But here he is with Soundwave. 
my custom sound wave and I love this mold. I really do, like, I didn't think I was going to. Soundwave's lucky, man. He's a great character. But of course, for me, since I want this guy to be Logos Prime, it's probably more appropriate to show him with my current standing members for the 13 Primes. And admittedly, I know some people will say, hey, because of Prime Masters, like we had an Onyx Prime, and we had a uh, Soulless Prime, and we had an Alchemist Prime. I'm not really counting those. The only Prime Master that I count is my Cronus because he should be so small. So I do count my Cronus more often than not. The original 13 is made up of Prima. And the only real, true kind of visual representation that we have of Prima is this guy here. Now, yes, I know what you're thinking. That's Protoform Optimus Prime from the movie. Indeed, but he has evidently been retconned as a version of Prima. We have Vector Prime, of course, in the back there, represented by the 2008 Universe version. Alpha Trion, by the Titans Return version. Solus Prime, who I don't have. I'd love to have that um, Salvia Promenon as my version of Solus Prime. I'd love it. My Cronus by the Little Power of the Primes Micromaster down there. Alchemist, we don't have. Uh, I kind of want Mac, Mac Adam as my version of Alchemist. Uh, I think he could stand in as that character quite nicely. Uh, I don't have a Nexus Prime. I don't have an Onyx Prime. I don't have an Amalgamus or a Quintus or the Liege Maximo. We have the Fallen down on the far end, though he could probably use a better update. We have Optimus, who is that mysterious 13th Prime. That's generally considered to be the main members. And sometimes that changes a little bit. Enter Logos Prime. He is very much an enigma wrapped in a mystery. And all the Primes, of course, have some sort of an artifact. Well, so did Logos Prime. His is the Zeonomicon. And the Zeonomicon is the thing that kind of, like, helps him to kind of control, like, space and time or those lines thereof. And you might say, wow, that's an interesting name, but, like, it's, is it a thing? Like, the Matrix of Leadership is a thing. You know, that, um, uh, like, I can't remember what it's called. That Star Saber is a thing. Uh, you know, so all of them are, are a thing. Well, indeed, the uh, uh, Zeonomicon is a thing. You probably better know it as the Cyber Planet Key of Vector Prime. This is the artifact by rights that Logos Prime has that he was trying to hand off to Megatron, evidently, according to the fiction. And I think the fiction might come from Beast Wars Reborn. Maybe that's where it comes from. Uh, didn't really succeed. Eventually, it kind of got handed off to Vector. Such is the way it goes. And it's kind of presumed that Logos and uh, Hellbuzza, who I don't have put in the, the picture here, but I guess I should. Here, we'll kind of put them back here. Uh, they were destroyed, apparently, aboard um, Sound Blaster's ship. However, there are some corners of, uh, like, Cybertronian lore and history, some, some myth and legend that says that he was not, in fact, destroyed then. Because of his power over time and space, he somehow disappeared and still exists somewhere in the shadows, lurking through time and history. So at the end of the day, what's my take? Fantastic. It was fantastic as Soundwave. It's fantastic here. Um, if you have skipped it over, I highly advise that you get at least one of these to be in your collection. It's not both of them because they're fantastic. Uh, so many conversion options, so many display options, and honestly, uh, this guy can serve as either a Japanese iteration of Sound Blaster or he can go among your uh, Primes display as Logos Prime and kind of fit that bill pretty well as well. I think he's a complete win all the way around for whichever character you prefer to have him represent. And here we are once again, and here they are once again. And look, here's the way that this boils down. It's a very weird, quirky release that they did for the 35th anniversary here. If you missed out on the sound wave that was released a little earlier, Get Sound Blaster. He's fantastic. It's a great mold. So versatile in so many ways. 
If you have Soundwave and you were thinking of skipping this um, because you don't know Sound Blaster from the Japanese fiction or you don't care about Sound Blaster from the Japanese fiction, I get that. Don't get it as Sound Blaster. Get it as Logos Prime. Now, I know, I know. Logos Prime is uh, traditionally um, one that's like I'll say a fringe member of the original 13 in some continuities he is in the official covenant of promise he is not um, I'm trying to amass that kind of dynasty of 13 and I'm okay with adding logos prime even if he doesn't officially count because the question can be asked then where does he fit in I mean after all he is intimately tied to space and time abilities, so maybe he is lurking even though he's not officially recognized as a member of the 13. Interesting story to be told there, I think. Uh, nevertheless, I'm cool with putting him in there for now, and I'm cool with this representation because I'm not going to go back and find that Galaxy 4 sound, uh, sound Blaster. And Logos Prime is known as a character who's able to like change his look and I don't really, really want to say shape shift but he can take on sort of any look he wants and why not take on this body type of a sound blaster I love the mold I even like the remolded chest and I'm cool with having it a second time here I'm cool with having it as a version that can go uh, in my primes display the fact that I had an extra laser beak that I was able to repaint into hell buzzsaw for him to talk through, because Hell Buzza serves as his mouthpiece, works just great. It looks great. It fills the bill for me. Anyway, let me know what you think about Soundwave or Sound Blaster, or heck, the character of Logos Prime. So much to unpack and think about here. So many options, so many possibilities. I didn't have to do guilty or innocent. Soundwave was innocent. Sound Blaster also innocent. Uh, it's fan. It's a fantastic mold. It really really is and I don't say that lightly because usually I'm a, I'm the dude who's usually pretty hypercritical about everything anyway let me know what you think about this guy I appreciate you dropping by give me some of your extremely valuable time I know how important it is to you please hit that subscribe button it is vitally important if you're in a position to help the channel to grow there is a donate link down in the description don't forget that somehow some way each and every day you do make a difference and i look forward to the next time that you and i get together to have another visit either in the live streams at the stop motion premieres or the old-fashioned way the way we always get together right here inside the videos